gonna be a snow day here in Colorado. So I thought it would be fun to do a cozy little vlog. We're gonna make some bagels, go shopping, make dinner later. Figure we could just hang out, see where the day takes us. I feel like I've forgotten how to be on camera. I mostly do voiceovers these days. So kind of want to push myself out of my comfort zone and train myself to be better at talking to you guys again. Before we do anything else, I have some bread dough to attend to. I made this batch of sourdough bagel dough last night. So it's been sitting and fermenting on the counter for like 10-ish hours. And I'm going to go ahead and shape them and then they need to rise probably for another hour or two. And then we'll boil them and bake them. I make some kind of bread usually every week. Just so that all of the bagels are of uniform size, I like to weigh out my portions. So what I'll do is take the total weight, 924, and then we'll divide it by either six or eight. I'm not sure how big I want these to be. Let's do eight bagels. So we're going for about 115 grams per bagel. Okay, we've measured them all out and we're gonna go ahead and actually I gotta take all my rings off. I don't wanna be losing any of them in the dough. Now we're gonna go ahead and shape them. I think I wanna try a new method of shaping today. Usually I just form a ball like this and then I stick my finger through the middle and just stretch it out. I wanna try another method that I saw on TikTok. Okay, so I'm attempting this alternate method and you roll it out into like a long rectangle first and then you are gonna roll it and then you're gonna kind of tuck this end into this end, which I have tried twice and I'm having trouble uh, kind of like that, but it was much more graceful on TikTok. And then you're gonna stretch it out a little. Yeah, it's not, it's not great. <laughs> Maybe I just need more practice. Here they all are. I mean, none of them actually look too great. It's gonna be fine. They're still gonna be tasty. This one especially is looking rough, but you can see the difference between the ones that I use that, um, TikTok method versus just the one where I poked a hole in it. I like these better, I think, and they're way easier to do. So that's probably what I'll stick with. These guys are shaped. I'm gonna let them sit for probably an hour or so. It's pretty cold in here. They don't need to fully double, but they just need to be a little bit puffy before we go ahead and boil them. I think maybe later today or sometime this week, I'm gonna try to make a flat proofing cover for my baked goods so I don't have to use plastic wrap. Um, a couple months ago, I made a bunch of these little bowl covers that I use to cover my dough when it's proofing. And it's like cotton fabric here. It's lined with waterproof uh, food safe fabric so it doesn't stick to the dough. And then it's elasticized and I just, I use these all the time and I love them. So I think I'm gonna try to make like a flat one that I can put on my like bagels and buns when they are proofing so they don't dry out. But for now, I'm just gonna use like a damp uh, kitchen towel. So I just moistened, moistened this and I'm gonna lay it over top because you don't want your dough to develop like a, a crust. Okay. Okay, we're gonna make our daily lattes. It's snowing, so obviously we have to make hot lattes today. Got my beans from my favorite local coffee shop. This is a half-calf blend, because I like to drink either decaf or half-calf coffee, so I can like save my caffeine points for other things that are more fun. I really like energy drinks. I'm obsessed with the Alani energy drinks right now. I'm not gonna have one today, but on days that I go lift, I drink half of those. So I have half-calf coffee, and then I have half of an energy drink, and it like, Perfect amount. So I usually just buy regular Oatly. The other day, I thought I would splurge and get the barista edition. And honestly, I think I like 
the original better. I think the main difference between the two is there's a bit of a higher fat content, like there's more oil in the barista edition, which maybe helps it hold foam better, but the mouthfeel is a bit greasier, so I prefer this. I've just been mixing the two until I'm done with the barista edition, but that's my opinion. If you guys have a favorite milk for um, like steaming and making espresso beverages, let me know. I'm open to recommendations. I'm very far from having perfected packing shots. Like, it, sometimes it's rough. So if you have any tips, let me know. I have some homemade brown sugar syrup on the bottom of this. It's literally just simple syrup, but I use brown sugar and I add a little bit of vanilla. I can't really pour anything cool yet. Sometimes I get a heart, sometimes, but usually nothing. <laughs> Got my coffee, so I'm happy. It's so good. The brown sugar syrup is, it's really easy to make and it tastes amazing. So you should definitely try it. I think we're gonna try to do a quick grocery store run before too much snow accumulates just to get dinner stuff and stuff for the next few days. So while I drink this, I'm going to do a little bit of meal planning and write my grocery list. Okay, I think I'm done planning my grocery list for now. I'm gonna get stuff for ramen tonight. So noodles, silken tofu, some kale and bean sprouts. Then I'm gonna get stuff for Buddha's Feast, which is like one of our favorite go-to meals. We have it once or twice a week and it's just mixed vegetables. Sometimes we'll add some tofu and then it's all just in a, like a cornstarch thickened brown sauce. I'm gonna get stuff for burrito bowls. So some dried beans that we can cook up in the Instant Pot, some fajita veggies, stuff for guac if the avocados look good today. And then the Baked by Melissa Green Goddess Salad, I've been obsessed with for weeks. If you haven't heard of it, I will link it down below, but it's just a salad recipe that was trending on TikTok. It's cabbage and cucumber base and everything's chopped super fine. And it has this creamy herby dressing and it's just really crunchy and creamy and satisfying. And you can customize it in a bunch of different ways. So I'm gonna get uh, ingredients for that. Ever since I discovered it, I've had a container in my fridge at all times. It's like addictive. And then I think since I'm making bagels today, I'm gonna get stuff to make carrot locks and I'm gonna get some more vegan cream cheese. Okay, I air fried one of these hash browns. I'm obsessed with these. I eat one pretty much every single day. I wonder if there's a way I can make these from scratch in bulk because we go through so many of them. Before I get ready to go grocery shopping and everything, I'm gonna play a little bit of Animal Crossing. I posted on my Instagram stories a few weeks ago asking you guys if I should finally bite the bullet and get a switch. We've been thinking about it for a long time. When we were living in San Diego, my sister is a big gamer. So we were playing a lot of her video games on the switch. And then when we moved back to Colorado, we were like, oh, should we do it? Is it worth it? When I posted that story, everyone was like, yes, get the switch. It's worth it. Get Animal Crossing. So I did. Usually I'll play in the mornings for like 20 minutes and I'll just like water my flowers and my plants and stuff and talk to the villagers and sell some things. I obviously at the beginning of quarantine, everyone was obsessing over Animal Crossing. And for some reason I never really looked into it, but I kind of assumed it was more of a, like a farming simulator game. If you've ever played any of the Harvest Moon games, I used to love those, especially like the OG Harvest Moon 64. I, if they re-released that game, I would buy it so fast. I really like Animal Crossing. It's very cute. It's very heartwarming and relaxing to play, but I kind of still want something that's more along the lines of the Harvest Moon games. Like I wanna be able to tend my livestock and grow crops and such. So a few people have recommended Stardew Valley to me. If you guys have that game and you recommend it, let me know. Cause I don't know, I just, that's what I'm craving right now. Another game Eric and I have been obsessed with. This one is available I think on PC and PS4, I'm not sure if what other platforms it's available on. It's called Civ, specifically we have Civ 6. 
and it's like a civilization builder. I've never played Settlers of Catan. I really don't like playing competitive games, at least against other humans, you know? But I've heard it kind of likened to that. It's like a more complex civilization builder. And when I tell you that the game is addictive, like when we first got it, it was like on sale. We got it for nine bucks and oh my God, the amount of play we've got out of it for nine dollars is insane but it completely destroyed our sleep schedule because we were playing it so obsessively we were staying up to like 3 a.m just saying like oh, one more turn one more turn so that is one that we have been loving and i highly recommend if you like strategic games if you guys have any other <laughs> recommendations we have a ps4 and a switch now so taking any recommendations right now eric is in our studio teaching a guitar lesson he teaches lessons through Zoom, so he teaches music production, and then he has one student who's learning guitar. So that's what he's doing right now. I'm just picking apples. <laughs> it's just crumbs. <gasps> They're so good. We're headed to the store, blasting the heater. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Eric, and I have a problem. I'm addicted to chicken nuggets. <laughs> we have three kinds of nuggets in the freezer right now. After this little snack, we're only gonna have two, in my defense. So I'm currently heating up the last four Impossible Nuggets. What's, what's your rating? I love those. They're like a little creepy. I mean, I feel like everything Impossible is a little creepy at first because you're like, whoa, it's so realistic. Like they have like such a chickeny vibe. Do you remember where you got those? Uh, probably Sprouts or Whole Foods. Okay. Or Kroger. Okay. Really, I think they're everywhere. So you don't remember? No. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Then I got these nuggets from Whole Foods because I knew we were running out of those. And then we were at Sprouts just now and I completely forgot we had both of those. And I got the Beyond Nuggets because I really want to try them. So now I have both of these. Sorry for the background noise. We've got the air fryer going with Eric's chicken nuggets in there. But I'm getting ready to finally boil the bagels. I let them go for longer than I had intended to. I kind of got sidetracked, but it's, it's fine. They're still going to be delicious. I'm bringing a pot of water to a boil on the stove. I'm going to add a few tablespoons of barley malt syrup, which just helps to improve the flavor. It gives them more of that authentic New York bagel flavor, and it will help them to develop that nice, shiny, golden brown crust. I'm gonna give them a little egg wash with just egg. I don't typically bother doing that because it's mostly just aesthetic, but since I'm filming today, I figured I would. I've just been making plain bagels for the most part, and then if I want like everything bagel seasoning on it, I put it on the cream cheese instead. Every time I put toppings on the bagels, they just fall off and they end up all over my counter, so. Into the oven they go. The bagels are done. They came out absolutely massive because I proofed them for so long. This one came out nice. I used like the alternate uh, rolling method for this one. We got a new cream cheese. I haven't had the day of cream cheese in like a few years because I never really cared for it, but they have repackaged it. I opened that. <laughs> I was like, um. <laughs> they repackaged it and it says like new taste or something. New and improved, so I figured we'd give it another try. I'm gonna toast this really quick. So they had this one and they had the plain Dea at Sprouts um, and Sarah grabbed the plain one and I was like, wait, don't you want the chive and onion one? As in, I want the chive and onion one. And she was like, oh, I didn't even look to see what it was because it was like purple. She just assumed I thought it was, it was like, like strawberry. strawberry. Yeah. Which, do you guys eat that? I've never had, I've never eaten sweet cream cheese. I've never eaten sweet bagels. I know they make like blueberry bagels and cinnamon raisin bagels, but I don't really. 
I'm a strict like um, I'm a savory breakfast gal in general. Not that this is breakfast, but yeah. in New York, scallion cream cheese. Can I try a bite plain? Go ahead. Ah, oh, oh. good. Mm -hmm. Is it sour? I fermented it longer than I usually would. Very mildly. These are way fluffier than my bagels usually are. It's good. How do you feel about it? Do you like it better when they're fluffier? I like them fluffy, yeah. Okay. I just feel like it gives the illusion of having more. <laughs> Duly noted. Okay. <laughs> this cream cheese is really spreadable, which is a plus. My favorite vegan cream cheese flavor-wise is the one from Trader Joe's, but I've noticed like even if you let it sit out for like an hour, it's still really hard. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to like shave a layer of it off the top. Uh, it still tastes like Daya. It's not bad. Mm -mm. It's not good though. <laughs> it tastes like the cream cheese technology hasn't advanced in the last like five years. Cause it just tastes like Daya did when it mm. first came out. It needs a little salt, I think. We got this fancy smoked flaked sea salt. It smells really smoky, but the smoky flavor doesn't really come through when you're eating it for some reason. It's weird. When you sniff it, it's like very intense. You did need a little salt. Mm hmm Are you happy with them? Mm-hmm. This might be my favorite batch of bagels. Mm. Maybe I've just been consistently underproofing them to try to give them that like chewy texture, mm -hmm. but I actually like them a bit fluffier. You've never made a bad batch. No. It's hard to make bad bread. I mean like every batch is, you know, one million times better than like the Thomas, the Thomas brand. I'm happy. I feel mm. like these would make good sandwiches because they're not too hard. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let's make bagel sandwiches toasted with tomato soup for dinner mm. this week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I show them something? Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at the frozen burrito section and I really like these alpha burritos and they have two new kinds of breakfast burritos. There's a bacon and like tofu egg scramble and a protein supreme with like bacon steakless strips, sausage crumble, mm -hmm. cheese, tofu. What does that mean? All their burritos are good, but I saw these and I was like, these are like pure, unadulterated breakfast burritos. These feel like a nice size. I feel like sometimes mm -hmm. the frozen burritos are too small. Yeah, yeah, it's enough for a meal. Sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention it because I'm really excited to try them and I feel like they're going to be really good. Maybe I'll try them tomorrow morning and we can put it in the vlog. Yeah. So I got my silken tofu. You can just add this, and I oftentimes do just add it to my stir fries or stews or whatever at the very end and just heat it through. But if I wanna go the extra mile, I like to kind of braise it and it helps it develop this kind of skin, like slightly, slightly crispy. And I don't know, I really like the texture. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. It's really easy. It just kind of takes a little bit longer. Nonstick pan. I'm still gonna add a little bit of oil to it just because the silken tofu does have a tendency to stick. Let the oil heat up. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of coarsely cut it in the carton. What I do is just let it cook on one side until it starts to develop a golden brown skin. And it does take a while because there is a lot of excess liquid in silken tofu which has to cook off first before it can start to brown. But just be patient and check occasionally and then give it a flip when it is golden brown on the bottom.
my biggest fear is losing